Welcome, and thank you for choosing Memorial Care Long Beach Medical Center for your joint replacement surgery. The post-operative unit is located on the fourth floor east wing. The focus of our program is early mobility and wellness. You can expect to walk the same day as surgery and to walk at regular intervals during the waking hours of the day. You are encouraged to bring and dress in your own loose fitting clothing. Please avoid any clothing that touches the ground as this can pose a fall risk. It is also recommended that you bring shoes with good tread on the soles. Hospital stay is usually just one overnight stay. Your coach is whomever you've selected to support you in your recovery. Usually this is a family member or a friend. Coaches are encouraged to attend physical therapy sessions with you while you are a patient in the hospital. At this time, you may have two visitors at the bedside if you are in a private room. Visitors may use the restroom in the patient room or the restrooms located near the elevators. Visiting hours are from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. At this time, no overnight stays are allowed. In preparation for your surgery, please make sure that you are getting medical clearance by your primary care doctor or specialist as directed by your surgeon. Please also make sure that you're getting any required pre-op testing done. Pre-op blood work and EKGs can be completed at the hospital without an appointment or can be done at your primary care doctor's office. Smoking should be stopped as early as possible prior to your surgery as this can impair the healing process. Hospital pre-admission is a two-part process that involves admitting and nursing. The pre-admission process is not completed until you have done both parts. The admitting department must verify your demographic and insurance information. This may be done over the phone or in person if you come to the hospital to complete any preoperative testing. Admitting is located on the first floor adjacent to the main lobby. The nursing portion of the pre-admission process consists of a phone interview. An appointment is needed for this interview. Please call 562-933-1042 to schedule your appointment for your nursing call. Please have a current list of medications ready for this interview. Final confirmation of your arrival time and anticipated surgery start time will be a phone call from the hospital the day before your surgery. You will receive instruction as to when to stop eating and drinking before surgery, as well as any medications to take or not take the morning of surgery during your pre-admission phone call. You should stop all supplements, aspirin, anti-inflammatory medications seven to 10 days prior to surgery. If you are taking any prescribed blood thinning medications, please seek advice from your surgeon and the prescribing doctor as to when to stop these medications. On the day of surgery, you must enter the surgery pavilion directly. Their entrance is on the same side of the hospital as the emergency room department on Columbia Street. Once you enter, check in at the front desk and you will be taken back to the surgical prep area. There are no visitors allowed in the surgical prep area. You may have your cell phone with you until you are going into surgery. The process to store your cell phone and any valuables brought with you is seen on this slide. You will receive a dose of antibiotics intravenously before surgery begins. Either your surgeon or a physician's assistant will ask you to confirm the direct correct joint that the surgery is planned for. Once agreement has been reached, the doctor or physician assistant will mark the correct joint with a marking pen. You will also meet the anesthesiologist that will be taking care of you. This doctor will review your health and medication list that you provided during your admission phone interview. The doctor will discuss with you the anesthesia medication that you will be receiving and answer any questions that you may have. Most patients have joint replacements under a spinal anesthesia. A nerve block may also be used along with the anesthesia. Nerve blocks are primarily used for pain control. The anesthesiologist can answer any questions that you may have regarding nerve blocks prior to your surgery. On average, most joint replacements last one and a half to two hours. After your surgery, you will be moved to a bed into the recovery room. If your surgery is planned to be outpatient, you will discharge directly from the recovery room once you have met criteria to do so. Physical therapy will see you in the recovery room and ensure that you are cleared to discharge home safely. You will need to be able to tolerate fluids and have adequate pain control before leaving the hospital. You can expect to be in the recovery room for approximately six hours if you are going home the same day. Please note that no visitors are allowed in the recovery room. If you are staying overnight, you will be transferred out of the recovery room and into a room on the fourth floor once you are medically cleared to do so and a bed is available. 
you can expect to be in the recovery room for approximately two hours if you are staying overnight. For patients admitted to the hospital overnight, you can expect that you will be able to eat and drink as tolerated after surgery. It's recommended that you progress your diet slowly until you are certain that you are able to tolerate food and fluids without any nausea or vomiting. If you arrive to the joint center in the early afternoon, you will see physical therapy that same day. You will be encouraged to sit in a recliner chair until bedtime to promote being out of bed as much as possible. If the surgery takes place later in the day, you'll see physical therapy the very next morning. The nursing staff can assist you with getting out of bed and into a chair prior to your formal physical therapy session. If the decision was made to insert a urinary catheter during surgery, that will be removed the very next morning. The bone on bone pain that you're feeling now, which led you to this surgery, will likely be gone, but the surgery and all that is involved will leave you with some post-operative pain that we will need to manage with pain medication. While you will not be pain-free immediately after surgery, our goal is for your pain to be at a tolerable level. Please keep in mind that oral pain medication is the preferred method of pain control and does take approximately 30 to 45 minutes to take effect. It's recommended that you take oral pain medication prior to your pain reaching a severe level for it to have the best effect. While in the hospital beat setting, we will be asking you to rate your pain using a pain scale of zero to 10. From the diagram you see here, zero is no pain and 10 is the worst possible pain. We use a combination of modalities that are listed here to manage post-operative pain. These include medications, cold therapy, and mobility. Constipation can be a challenging issue for patients. You are at a risk for constipation for as long as you are taking narcotic pain medication. While you're in the hospital, you will be given scheduled medication to help prevent or alleviate constipation that you may be experiencing. Products like stool softeners, laxatives, suppositories, and enemas are available over the counter without the need of a prescription. Look for products that contain a stimulant. For example, Senna, sometimes listed as Senicide. You are highly encouraged to purchase one of these products to take regularly at home after surgery until you are having regular bowel movements. The dressing that is over your incision at discharge from the hospital is medicated with the silver antimicrobial lining designed to cut down on the chances of infection. It is also water resistant, allowing for you to shower after surgery. However, it's recommended that you avoid letting the shower hit the dressing directly for prolonged periods of time. If you feel that this will be unavoidable, please cover your dressing with an AquaGuard cover or another type of plastic protective covering during your showers. You should not submerge the dressing in water, such as a swimming pool, jacuzzi, bathtub, or any ocean swimming for at least one month until cleared by your surgeon. Please leave the original dressing in place until your follow-up appointment with your surgeon, which is usually two weeks after the surgery. If you notice any large amount of drainage on your dressing, or if the dressing becomes loose or removed for any reason, please contact your surgeon. You will receive a cold therapy product at the hospital and it is yours to take home. It's a simple, easy to use product that includes gel packs, which you freeze and insert into a simple wrap that you apply to your knee or hip. In total, you will have four gel packs to rotate and the wrap. Icing at least six to eight times a day for 20 minutes at a time is recommended to help reduce pain and swelling after surgery. Regular consistent icing is an important component to a successful recovery. Some swelling is expected around the joint. Swelling may be more prominent if you are having a knee replacement. Your goal in recovery is to balance some activity with rest and elevation to keep your swelling minimal. Do not sin, sit or stand with your feet dependent on the floor for prolonged periods of time. If you note swelling in the foot, position your, yourself so that your foot is higher than your heart for periods of time to help with the swelling. Noted here are steps to decrease your chances of complications. How to perform ankle pump exercises are located in section seven of the guidebook. You will walk with assistance on the day of surgery, and it is important in early recovery to get up and walk every two hours within your home. Your surgeon may also prescribe an anticoagulant medication to help prevent blood clots after surgery. You will likely be on this medication for four to six weeks after surgery. 
Infection pre prevention begins before surgery. It is important that the patient be in optimal health before proceeding with joint surgery. Dental should health should be optimal and patients should not have any dental procedures, including teeth cleaning during the two weeks just before surgery. Please ask your surgeon when you may have dental work resumed after surgery. You should not have any breaks in your skin, such as wounds or rashes, as breaks in the skin can allow a pathway for bacteria to enter in and infection to occur. Diabetes should also be well controlled and smoking should be stopped as both of these can impair the healing process. Additionally, antimicrobial wipes will be used as part of preparation in the hospital. Antibiotics are also administered while you're in the hospital as a preventative measure. You will need a front wheel walker to use after surgery while you are recovering. If you already own a walker, please do not bring it to the hospital as we will have one available for you to use. If you do not own one, we will work with you to secure one through your insurance plan. Walkers are sold in the outpatient pharmacy in the event that one is not covered by your insurance plan. Prior to discharge, your physical therapist will confirm that you are demonstrating the ability to walk safely and correctly with the walker. Other adaptive equipment, such as a bedside commode, elevated toilet seat, and hip kit, which includes a reacher, long-handed shoe horn, and sponge, may also be recommended by the physical therapist. This equipment is usually not covered by your insurance plan, but can be purchased in the outpatient pharmacy. Before you come to the hospital for your joint replacement, evaluate your home in preparation for your return. Remove clutter, making sure that you can walk through your home safely with your walking device. Look for tripping and fall hazards, such as cords and throw rugs. If you're responsible for pets, you will not be able to get to the floor level to replace food and water. Evaluate your furniture and have a plan where you will do your resting. Depending on the firmness or softness, some furniture may be difficult for you to get up from. Please make sure that you have a secured support system at home to assist with caring for pets and other household chores, such as cleaning and cooking. Physical therapy will instruct you on how to safely transfer in and out of a bed and chair, as well as how to safely walk with an assistive device. They will provide you with home exercise programs. The expectation is that you will do these same exercises at home twice a day to the best of your ability until your surgeon has transitioned you to an outpatient therapy. If you have stairs at home, please count how many stairs you have, as well as whether or not you have a railing. Physical therapy will teach you how to safely navigate these stairs prior to discharge. They will also teach you how to transfer in and out of a car safely. If you're having hip replacement, you may be restricted from certain movements temporarily after surgery. These hip precautions are designed to prevent you from dislocating the joint and may be in place anywhere from four to 12 weeks. Please ask your surgeon how long you will need to adhere to your hip precautions. The type of hip precautions that you will have depends on the approach that your surgeon is taking while performing the hip replacement. You should confirm which approach your surgeon is planning if you are having a hip replacement. These hip precautions will be reinforced with you by the team in the hospital. If you are having a posterior approach, the incision will be on the side of the hip. You will not be able to bend your hip past 90 degrees, rotate your surgical leg inward or across your legs. If you sleep on your side, you will be able to sleep on the side opposite of the hip replacement. However, you should place a pillow in between your legs to prevent you from crossing your legs during your sleep. You may also sleep on your back. If you're having an anterior approach, the incision will be on the front of the hip. You will not be able to bring your surgical leg behind you and turn it outward at the same time. This precaution may be broken by lunging forward with the surgical leg behind you. If you are having knee replacement, these are your goals for your range of motion for the new knee that you should aim to achieve during your recovery. Your goal is to be able to fully straighten the knee and to flex or bend the knee to 90 degrees. Pain and swelling in the early recovery period may prevent you from accomplishing these goals immediately. The most important goal is to be able to fully straighten your knee. To help accomplish this goal, avoid placing a pillow directly under the knee while resting. Doing so will prevent you from being able to fully straighten your knee. You will be expected to do the home exercise program provided to you by the hospital 
therapist twice a day until your surgeon instructs you to begin outpatient physical therapy. Please ask your surgeon when you should begin outpatient physical therapy and seek guidance regarding which facility you should attend. When transporting the patient after surgery in a car, home from the hospital and the follow-up doctor appointments or therapy appointments, the patient should be in the front passenger side of the vehicle. This is where you can create the most legroom for the patient to get in. Move your car seat all the way back and recline the seat back to allow for adequate room to get in and out of the car, but always remember to have it upright for travel. Place a plastic liner on the seat to make it easier to slide back into the seat. Bring back up to the car until you feel it touch the back of your leg. Hold onto the car seat or dashboard and slide your surgical foot out straight. Please watch your head as you sit down. Slowly lower yourself into the car seat. Lean back as you lift your surgical leg into your car. You may find it helpful to use a cane, leg lifter, or other device to assist. This technique will be reinforced with you during your hospital stay. If you have stairs to navigate in your discharge destination, you are allowed to go up and down. Therapy will have you practice as many steps as you have to navigate upon discharge. When going upstairs, you will lead with a non-surgical leg. When going downstairs, you will lead with a surgical leg. Please be aware of how many steps you have, as well as whether or not you have a handrail on one or both sides, and also if you have steps to enter your home. While you will be able to safely navigate steps after leaving the hospital, it may be helpful to stay on the first level of your home if possible to minimize how frequently you're going up and down stairs. Thank you for viewing our online preoperative education. For any questions, please feel free to contact us at 562-933-4014. We look forward to seeing you on your road to recovery.